Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of Pollock and Thurston Interview. The man in the hot seat today getting ready for probably their biggest week of the year coming up with all of the events in and around Los Angeles, California. He is the COO of Fight TV, Mike Weber, back here on the program. Mike, how are you? It is the calm before the storm, I guess, uh, next <laughs> week as you guys have. Uh, it, it, first of all, is this your, your biggest week of the year in terms of volume and uh, engagement? It's a it's a strong weekend. Uh, it's a very big weekend. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, as we progress, it seems like we're getting more and more weekends like this all the time. Um, there's a weekend in mid April. You can't believe how many different wrestling shows we have. You know, with Impact, AAA, and New Japan all in the same weekend, and OVW and so forth. But yeah, it, it's a big weekend for us. Um, it's sort of nice. It's all at one location there. Um, we got about 18 shows this weekend. Actually, we have done as many as 35 shows during WrestleMania weekend uh, when WrestleMania was in New York. <laughs> there was just a lot more opportunities in New York than there was L.A. for live shows. But, um, yeah, we're real excited about what we got going on next week. This has also been the uh, the launch of uh, Fight Plus uh, this year, and we wanted, we wanted to talk a bit uh, with you about how long this has been in the pipeline and the idea of creating a subscription model as opposed to the, the a la carte view viewing that you know Fight TV has very much popularized within the pro wrestling landscape. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> we've been working on subscription services called Fight Plus here for about two years, sort of um, born out of the pandemic. Um, when we're looking to expand when all of a sudden we didn't have this many live shows. Uh, so FI Plus has been a great addition to the team. Um, it's really taken off here in the last several months since we've had GCW and, of course, bare knuckle fightings on there as well now. So we get some great content on, on, on the uh, platform. And, of course, you know, in L.A., um, you know, GCW has had the collective for a number of years putting together their – in this this year, they got 11 shows, but they've done as many as 15 in the, this weekend. And people have paid as much as, uh, you know, 135 150 $165 to watch all the GCW shows as a bundle. Now they're all available on Fight Plus. And uh, frankly, you know, you can buy a whole uh, annual membership for only uh, $69 uh, to do, uh, Fight Plus. So it's actually a, a great deal for the fans. Uh, to see the program and they want and GCW this year has got some great stuff you now with the you know uh, the seventh annual Joey Janela spring break the ninth annual um, Josh Barnett uh, blood sport um, DDT of course um, Effie's big gay uh, brunch you know so it goes on and on they have a great lineup of shows there on top of that and of course we got some other events which are offered as a standalone but they're unique events in their south and you know the uh, Impact Wrestling and New Japan uh, coming together for a, a joint event called Metaverse. Um, Tokyo Joshi, um, Japanese women's wrestling coming to L.A. Uh, it's got a very strong following. Of course, Ring of Honor's got their event uh, of the you know, Supercard of Honor um, under the direction of Tony Khan now. And um, th there's some great events to showcase that weekend. And Fight has... You know, all, all different methods of, of distribution for the content. Some of it is free. Some of it is part of the, the Fight Plus subscription. And some of it, as you said, is, is standalone. Just wondering what goes into deciding how it's going to be offered to the viewer, and whether that's a deal that you make with, with the partner themselves or, or is, are there other, other, other considerations? Well, you use a, a key term there. Um, everybody here is a partner of ours. So we make the decisions together, not in a vacuum. But we also, um, you know, we've done over a thousand live events a year. So we have a lot of analytics of what works and what's uh, the most uh, beneficial to an organization. And sometimes it's a standalone pay-per-view and sometimes it is free. I mean, we do OVW shows every Thursday night, <clears throat> excuse me, for free. Um, and uh, of course, in a uh, subscription service. Uh, one thing we are taking account like right now is, uh, as we definitely know, the economy has changed. Um, and, you know, People really think about how they spend their hard-earned money, and that's why the uh, Fight Plus has become a great uh, opportunity now to, uh, you know, spread spread your um, uh, take advantage of the uh, savings there. Only seven ninety nine a month. That's still a fantastic deal for a subscription service of any type, and especially in the sports uh, world when you have you know ESPN and Zone and 
these other platforms are definitely charging quite a bit more than what we charge for uh, Fight Plus. How deep does some of your analytics go when it comes to data? When you're looking at something like the collective, is it is it indicative of people that are like, do a lot of these shows bring their own audience? Do you find like a high level of crossover between the shows? Anything that you can sort of uh, reveal in terms of like just trends you see when it comes to something like the collective that is under this umbrella, but still very uniquely packaged shows? Well, GCW, fortunately, we've done quite a few. I think this is probably the third or fourth collective we've done with them. <clears throat> and, you know, of course, we've done their 75 shows a year. So the, the analytics on GCW is, is very deep. We know how uh, loyal their fan base is and how much they like watching other wrestling shows as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, we go uh, relatively deep, and it's really easy to go deep when you just have a lot of content over a period of time that you can really uh, draw a plan. I mean, we've been doing this for seven years now. In that period, we've probably done about 7,500 live shows. And um, practice makes perfect, and the information out there is uh, very valuable to us to make the right decisions. And when it comes to how you make these partnerships with, with different wrestling companies, I was wondering if you could give us any insight. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to go into numbers or anything like that. But, like, are there different sort of agreements in terms of are, are the wrestling companies or other partners being compensated based on engagement? Or, or do some companies even have rights deals like we're familiar talking about when, when it comes to WWE and things like that? Uh, well, I mean – Everybody we're doing with it, we have a rights deal with. Um, so there's really not a lot of, um, you know, to, to, it's pretty black and white for us, to be honest with you. Uh, we're partners. Um, you, you make more money, we make more money. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a pretty clear uh, relationship there, how it works there. So we both work together very closely in marketing the events um, and promoting uh, and so forth. And um, it works out well. Um, <clears throat> obviously, some of these events, but not in the case of next weekend, some of them are on cable and satellite, but next weekend's events are all exclusive to fight. And, and, and that's very important to us. When it comes to uh, newer companies that are emerging and wanting to get on the platform, like if, uh, if it was Pollock and Thurston Pro Wrestling that was launching <laughs> and you've never heard of us and we're coming to you, what is what are some of the criteria and has that evolved over the years of sort of what is the standard you are looking for where it's not as um, proof of concept like a GCW that you have so much experience with or some of their offshoots? No, this is something we deal with every day. Um, matter of fact, I did about three, four of these calls yesterday. Uh, only one of them in wrestling, but we also do it in boxing, too. Um, you know, listen, as a starting company seven years ago, pretty much is almost anything we would take. Um, the, the bar was pretty low. Um, we're not getting snotty about it, but we do want to have a good television production. Fortunately, in wrestling, very, very few companies I have to have issues with what they put in the ring. Uh, it's more about the, the their their fan base, of how they market themselves, and the uh, TV production. You know, um, <laughs> simple things like uh, making sure your ring announcer is part, they can hear through the commentary, you know, and stuff like this. Um, make sure you have enough lights so you can actually see the tops of the guy's heads. <laughs> so it's, it's some pretty darn basic stuff here. But um, we are upping the uh, production quality of, of events, and we do uh, work on that quite hard. And there's a lot of uh, promoters now. We say, okay, like your show. We appreciate your effort and stuff. But maybe you should test it out a little more doing it on YouTube uh initially or some other platform and then come back to us in a few months and um hopefully you guys have uh, gotten the experience to put a good well-produced show together I, last time you talked to john here was just about a year ago i think leading up to last year's wrestlemania and at, at, at that time triller was about to go public i think a couple months away um just wondering how how has triller being a public company who is your, your parent company um how how has that changed fight well, unfortunately, they haven't gone public yet. Uh, they're, okay. they're still they're still working on that yet. Uh, I do anticipate here in April. Um, I mean, we talk to auditors on a daily basis for them to put together their S-1 filing. This is not a real super secret. Um, so they're, they have not released a date, uh, but we anticipate it's uh, uh, pending and very soon. Um, 
and that will change things uh, for us. Right now, it's been pretty much status quo moving forward with our our, our company here and um, doing well. I mean, we're, we're still averaging our 25 to 35 live shows a weekend. Um, all the time we start adding on the boxing events. We had some great boxing this weekend. Of course, we work in bare knuckle fighting quite closely, which is also was acquired by Triller, which is um, a, a real important factor for our development of our relationship with them that we now have a uh, the same parent company. I wanted to ask as well, just uh, so, sort of your thoughts when it comes to the, you know, the uh, evolving technology when it comes to a lot of these these buildings that you're dealing with i think that that is always something that you know it, it seems like it's more of a thing of the past now of making sure a stream is reliable like there's a certain consistency that i think fight has developed um but when you are assessing like buildings that you have not run before what are what are some of the checkpoints that you're looking for just that that a building can carry a live stream for three hours or so well um yeah we always want to make sure it's a dedicated internet stream and and fortunately it's much better than it was when we started seven years ago um but one of our major development in the technology standpoint is um uh, is uh there's something called live U box which uses a cellular a bonded cellular um uh, component to it to deliver so that's a good backup if there's a subpar internet in the venue so it, it's changed um quite a bit here um i won't say we 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 still worry about it every single weekend to make sure we have the right um technology coming out of the building for us and speaking of technology um you know fight uh has really made some great strides on our own platform we just uh released this past weekend a new version on ios uh we also had uh, a new version on android here about a month or so ago our uh website has been updated and we think we've enhanced the viewing experience on Fight 2, which is uh, where we've been putting a lot of our time and effort in from a technology standpoint. And we want to make sure, uh, I mean, frankly, right now, of course, I'm biased, but I think we have probably one of the best uh, uh, viewing experiences for an app out there right now. And is it still, I know that in the past we had spoken and you had mentioned like one of the very unique um, attributes of professional wrestling is the replay value. Is that still yes. the case when it, when it comes to that, you know, WrestleMania weekend, there's going to be so many events and it's not foreign that people will go back and watch shows. Whereas boxing, MMA, bare knuckle, it's sort of a, a small window that you have where it's, it's relevant to the fight audience. And once the result is out, it's almost as though it's on to the next event. Yeah, it's pretty traumatic, uh, uh, dramatic how different the viewing experience is for boxing fans and wrestling fans. Boxing fans, the minute that fight's over, we probably will do single digits and buys. Whereas wrestling, after the event's over, we'll probably add another 20 to 25% uh, viewership to those fights. And, of course, now Fight Plus, that's geared to a lot of VOD content, and wrestling is thriving on that platform because people can go back and, you know, I think GCW alone we have over – 220 230 past wrestling shows on the uh archive in the system that makes a, a big difference there um matter of fact this this morning because I, I missed it i went back and watched uh, a good portion of AEW dynamite from last week because i um and you know it was you know it's always fun the first time you watch it nevertheless it was live or not and in wrestling lends itself because wrestling is more of a show and say a boxing event where you can read the results in the paper the next morning or on paper that tells you how old i am on on online minutes after it happens you know following the industry do you notice any patterns of like what spikes interest in a match coming out of a weekend whether it's a, a heavily reviewed match or if it's <clears throat> maybe some controversial spot that has sent twitter into a giant debate i mean are, are there any certain trigger points where you know that's going to draw a lot of interest back to a show that maybe the night of isn't on everyone's radar i think the name of uh you know, the name of the wrestlers is still so important who it is <clears throat> what their background is that's going to get the casual viewer in there who knows of certain wrestlers oh they're going to be on this show i want to see it um you know, unlike, say, uh, AEW or WWE or even Impact, most of these shows are not that we're airing, especially during the next weekend, are not storyline driven as much. Um, but they all know that, and, you know, GCW's done this, you know, they, they attached you know, Joey Janela's name, John, Josh Barnett's name, um, uh, Jimmy Lloyd's name even to, to events there. 
and that gives the the, the tenor of what the show is going to be like, and that gets people excited. A New Japan versus Impact is a, a, a exciting um, opportunity because it just doesn't happen every day. So you got specialties there, and that's what's making it work. Yeah, I, I remember early on in the pandemic talking to a, a few independent wrestling promoters who were really pessimistic about the future of independent wrestling at that time because you know the the pandemic was happening and that stopped live events um spe speaking out happened and, and that you know caused a lot of controversy for a, a lot of promotions and AEW coming up and, and taking a lot of talent was was another concern so that there wasn't as much name talent to to bring in so I'm, I'm just wondering from like from your perspective do you feel that independent wrestling has changed a lot in in the last several years or or is it is that just sort of offset if it if, it, if that's the case is that just offset by streaming being more embraced as time goes on well, I think independent wrestling has grown because there is streaming and people can find it um, easier uh, instead of tape trading and so forth like it was back in the day. And uh, I'm dealing with more and more companies said, well, we, we started because of the pandemic, you know, uh, some of the small companies here and they're getting their feet wet and, and seeing how much, uh, how well it was working for them to do stuff. So yeah. Uh, quite, quite experience. I, I think independent wrestling is growing, and frankly, I think AEW has probably helped independent wrestling because so many of their top stars they almost encourage or they do encourage go, uh, other shows on the weekend, especially some of the younger guys, so they can get more ring time. And so, um, frankly, I think it's um, the independent wrestling scene has uh surged here the last uh two, three years. Just getting back to uh, the, the Collective, which, uh, of course, will be available on Fight Plus. And when it came to sort of this strategy, um, like, frankly, you you have a, a pretty rabid wrestling audience that is not shy about spending a lot of money when it comes to pro wrestling uh, on a yearly basis. Was it sort of any trepidation on anyone's part of, you know, this is such a great deal when you're talking about eight dollars that you can get all of these shows uh with an audience that frankly like they have shown like they will they will spend many multiples of that for some of these big events can you just take me a little into the decision making like this is obviously an investment in fight plus to introduce a lot of people this this coming week well uh, subscription is definitely the uh, a good big part of our future um because of the economics of it and the uh revenue that can count on a month by month basis um one thing we did do some research on GCW, so we you know we do seventy five shows with them a year with them, but it was a very small percentage of people who bought more than four or five a year. So we knew the fan base is there, people were interested enough to to pay for a, a show here, but people did not buy all seventy five shows. It was actually a much smaller number than we thought it would be, but it had a larger base of people, and so we we trust me again. Uh, I work with engineers and we're a technology company. So a lot of calculations went into this doing projections and figured out it's actually uh, more advantageous to, to for a product like GCW and some other paper, um, other companies here to run the uh, subscription model. Yeah, Cause the fans were there and they're willing to pay that subscription and they're willing to pay for it, but they're just not willing to pay for 75 shows in a year. Do you see that being a major, like for, for companies out there that are looking at creating their own isolated streaming service? Like so many, they're coming at it from the perspective, like we've got the content to deliver. But I think like what you've outlined here is that the technological back end, that like that is that is the nucleus of being able to have like a thriving streaming service. Yeah, I mean, the technology is not easy to do. I mean, fortunately, we were a technology company first. Um, I mean, they spent two years developing the tech technology before I got involved eight years ago. Um, and, and that really uh, has helped us propel us uh, in the, the direction that we're going there. So it's, it's been great with that. And, and it, it, it really, you won't be part of something bigger. I mean, WWE approved it. They moved to the Peacock. Peacock's thriving. So is WWE Network. It's worked perfectly for them. And I think that's one of the best uh, cases we can make that doing your own standalone um pay-per-view or excuse me or even subscription platform just doesn't make sense with all the time effort you got to put into to develop the uh, technology to do it um and money uh it, it makes more sense let let, let the uh, guys who do streaming on a daily basis handle it and uh, i just came from a conference in new york 
with all my counterparts in OTT industry. And that was the prevailing uh, thought there. You know, when you're listening to, you know, Amazon and Netflix and and, and organization like I Peacock talk about their programming, uh, it's much better to be part of a bigger thing than just on standalone. I mean, how many how many subscriptions do you really want? You know, you gotta have your Netflix and you gotta have your Prime, and then it starts you know starts adding up pretty quickly. So just having one subscription for say the wrestling category or the combat sports category, which would be fight, um, makes more sense than having a, a GCW app and a, uh, I don't want to start taking shots or maybe you know having separate uh, individual um, streaming services just for your brand. So it's much better to be out there. I mean, the only brands that really can support a uh, uh, streaming service on their own is like, you know, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, uh, stuff like that. Just thinking internationally, you've, you've done work lately with the, the cyber fight brands like Noah, and mm -hmm. you're doing one up, yep. upcoming with uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro uh, mm -hmm. and with DDT. Um, are there other opportunities with, you know, fairly big international promotions? Um, the ones that, that come to mind for me that I don't think you've done work with yet is, is Dragon Gate. And I think that you've done a little bit in the past with All Japan and, and even uh, Stardom is doing some pay-per-view events that are away from its subscription service. So Stardom, we've had conversation. We actually have aired a Stardom event in the past and it's done well, but they are very much, you know, they have a similar um, business model as New Japan has in, the, in with the TV Asahi. And so they really want to keep everything there. I believe they're putting it on uh, New Japan World. Uh, platform, so they do have their own platform. I disagree with that direction, but that's the direction they're going. Um, and we do work with other, you know, we just aired this past Sunday, you know, a AAA uh, Lucha event. So we're working with them internationally. We have had some uh, initial conversation of Dragon Gate, and, and um, we actually have done um, um, All Japan in the past, and uh, we've been trying to figure out how to resurrect that uh, relationship there. And um, it just, I'm one guy doing all of it, so don't get done quite as quickly as I'd want to do it. I would like to do more and more. But, um, yeah, it's very important to us uh, to have the international wrestling. Um, where we have uh, really progressed is in the U.K., uh, working with more and more wrestling organizations there. We just um, you know, did an announcement about a deal and done some of their first events again. It was was uh, Insane Championship Wrestling out of Glasgow. Uh, we had worked with them before they went to WWE. And, um, you know, they've been great coming back and, here and excited. And we're talking to some other organizations, UK right now as well. And, and their deal had just ended, it appeared, with WWE, with where they were on Peacock. And the same mm -hmm. thing for Progress. So it appears that Progress is available right now, too. It appears that way. We are in conversations with them. So um, we hope to have them on board. Uh, we are very familiar with them, uh, good people. And um, we hope we can just make a deal that works for both of us and that's always the key to it. So, uh, but we're excited about it. And, and then um, one thing I want to mention, you know, in, in advancement of our, our fight platform stuff too, is we have now um, really raised the bar with Fight 24-7. And Fight 24-7 is a free viewing service that's available on many, many platforms, most notably on Roku. And of course, it's on within our Fight uh, platform as well. And it essentially fe featuring boxing and MMA and pro wrestling events that you can watch 24 seven. It's a continuous stream of there. And we just announced that we've hit our uh, million hours of viewership here in the first year of operation for that. So, um, yeah, back to your original point is, yeah, we, we do offer programming on free pay-per-view and subscription. So really, you know, choose the way you like to watch us. Uh, we'll make it happen for you. And just to follow up on the AAA front after uh, this weekend's event, are there um, X amount of shows on, on the calendar for fight th this year that you're committed to with AAA, or is that still in negotiations? No, we're committed to, right now, there's going to be four major uh, pay-per-view events. Uh, Long-term, we do want to work with them to have them uh, more of their shows on to Fight Plus. But right now, the focus is their major four events, um, the Triple Manias events. Um, which are coming up here, I think the next one's in mid-April, and then I think the early early summer and late summer, I believe, is what the schedule is. And uh, they've been great partners to work with. Um, you know, we offer those shows in English and Spanish, uh, which is another sort of cool thing about our platform. Like, you know, the uh, 
you know, the AEW pay-per-view events. While we don't have rights in the United States, we do offer those shows in English, Spanish, French, and German because we have pretty much the rest of the world, and it does quite well for us. And my last question, uh, just, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have had quite the career in, uh, in all of combat sports and someone with uh, as much a, a, of an ear to the ground as you do. Uh, where is WWE going to be at the end of this year? Do you have any, any thoughts on wow. how, what, what could be a very seismic year for the company? Well, obviously, they're getting themselves set up to, to, for sale. Um, I, I actually I talked to a gentleman at WWE this morning, and they are doing everything they can to be the most cost-efficient vehicle to make their books look good as ever, and which there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way it should be. Um, you know, they're not sending as many people to uh, L.A. as they normally would for WrestleMania. Right. Um, they made their share of cutbacks and so forth to make themselves as lean and mean as possible which obviously makes yourself uh, attractive to uh, an investor or a buyer. Um, wow. I got to tell you, my money, and I have nothing to base this on other than doing this a long time, I think Endeavor would be a very good partner for them. Uh, if I was running Endeavor, it makes sense. They already got the UFC deal. They also do PBR, so they know the vet business and television business. And I think that would make – and they already have a working relationship with them since they still power their WWE network, um, which is available around the rest of the world using uh, Endeavor uh, technology. So I, I think Endeavor has to be a front runner, even though I think they may have said they aren't. <laughs> um, don't believe yeah, everything. Ari Emanuel has downplayed it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's called negotiations. I'm sure Nick may have downplayed it also, but um, – I, I'd be, um, I wouldn't be shocked if that's the direction it went. That doesn't mean it's going to, but um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting year because I got to tell you what happens with WWE is going to dictate a lot of what the potential for AEW is going to be here at the end of the year too. It's just sort of interesting. They're on a parallel trend here to make major changes to their television distribution over the next, uh, well, I guess now nine months. So yeah. Um, there's going to be a lot to watch here, and there's a lot of guys like me who are watching it very closely, for sure. Well, you, uh, you always have a, an open microphone here, Mike, if you ever want to come and uh, share your analysis in the uh, in the wake of this. Uh, anything else from you, Brandon, before we sign off? That, that That's it. I, that, I had the W question on, on my sheet, too. You got me. Uh, well, we want to direct everyone over to uh, fight.tv, and uh, next week they will be uh, busier than ever with uh, all of the events going down. And uh, anything else you, you want to uh, – direct uh, our viewers uh, towards Mike next week. I'm sure many people that are watching this are going to be uh, logged on to fight throughout the uh, the entire week. No, I just mostly, you know, as we like to spell fight, F-I-T-E, download now and, and use it and uh, experience. If you've never been on it, I think it'll be pleasant and surprised how easy it is to find the type of programming that you want and also watch out in the future here because we are uh, expanding into some other areas of sport beyond combat sports of soccer and rugby and programming like that. Well, Mike, we want to thank you uh, so much for the time. Um, I, I've said before to others, I think you definitely have a book in you one day if you ever want to uh, recount your times. Uh, WWF, WCW, TNA, Fight TV. I mean, you've, you've run the gamut in this industry, and we uh, very much uh, appreciate the time and all the best uh, next week. Yeah, I have a hard time holding a job down. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, be more than happy to. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys' time today. Thank you. Thanks again.